well. Call this meeting of the Narco City Council to order. The clerk will please take the roll. Councilmember Newton? Here. Councilmember Hoffman? Yes. Councilmember Bash? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hanna? Here. Mayor Grunmeyer? Yes. All present? The City Council will now recess to close session, section 54954, to consider the following matters as listed on the agenda. I'd like to reconvene uh, this session of the Narco City Council, and we will have a report of actions taken in closed session. Yes, the uh, City Council discussed the matters uh, listed on the uh, agenda in closed session, and there are no reportable actions. All right, thank you. At this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance with Council Member Ted Hoffman. So I may recite, Pledge to our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you'll please remain standing for our invocation, Pastor Aaron Diaz from the New Beginnings Community Church. Hi, thank you for having me. And um, on behalf of me and my family, we love Norco. <laughs> so thank you for letting us live here. Um, but if you would all join me in prayer. Um, thank you, God. Thank you for this wonderful country that we live in, Lord. God, and I want to thank you for the city of Norco, Lord God, and all those that are working to make Norco a wonderful place to live and do business, Father. Lord, I ask for wisdom for our, our local government here, Father. Lord, for every single person that's behind the scenes that helps to make decisions and to um, keep this place moving forward, Father. God, I thank you for the businesses and the households that are represented in Norco. We pray for prosperity for our city. We ask, Lord Jesus, for covering and safety in this place, Lord, that each person would feel safe and they would feel a part of the city of Norco, Father. So, God, I once again, I just thank you and I ask for your covering over every decision, over every um, everything, Lord God, that's on the table here before us, God. Lord, that you would bring the wisdom, you would bring the finances, Father God, and the right people, Lord Jesus, for the city of Norco. We thank you and we give you all the glory and honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right. At this time we'll have a presentation. So I'd like to call Terry of Eco Crawl to the podium, please. Hi, everybody. Uh, we wanted to come tonight. Um, I don't know if any of you were able to, I know some of you joined us up there. Some of us got in some of the Jeeps we went, uh, we had up there. But we wanted to come and thank you guys for allowing us to use a facility uh, in January. This, this um, concept came about uh, six so months ago, four months ago. We weren't even a company. We built a company. We got a bunch of people together. And we hosted our first event up at your facility. Um, and by all accounts, we think it was a, a huge success. We didn't draw the crowds, but that was kind of expected because we had no advertising. We had nothing to really build the campaign on. So kind of what we did in January was we invited a bunch of vendors. We had about 35 vendors with us. We invited clubs to come out, just kind of have fun, bring your families, and kind of experience what we're looking to do on a bi-monthly basis in somebody's city. So that's kind of what we did. Um, and it was a learning curve, a lot, of, a lot of things we learned, but we're coming back in March. And the reason that we did January the way we did it was to kind of set up for March. We figured we'd learn from our mistakes and listen to the feedback, and then we'd come back bigger and better. So since we had the event, we now we own our own content. We have a lot of great feedback, and I think um, March is going to be kind of crazy um, in a good way. Uh, what we're getting through social media, what we're getting through vendors coming, saying we need to be part of this, um, we're going to pack the house in March without without um, problem. Our, our company and our event is all about kind of trying to bring family together. I'm a resident now of Norco. I, I was in Chino Hills for years. I moved to Norco. Um, but, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with the community here. I mean, we have horsepower, not horses, but it's kind of all the same. We treat the land the same. We treat our family 
and friends the same. We invite everybody. So if you guys did come, uh, you kind of saw a taste of that. We had the whole kids play land where kids were playing with Tonka trucks and panning for gold and riding mini electric Jeeps and gas powered mini Jeeps. And then of course we had the big boys climbing through the obstacles in the big arenas and stuff. So it was a lot of fun. And um, we just wanted to come and thank you. I wanted to kind of acknowledge Patty Ireland, who's like on speed dial now. We talk at least five times a day. For she helped us tremendously. Ted, of course, you know I, I know he just likes to play around on the equipment up there, but <laughs> but he still was a huge help to us. Her staff is phenomenal. I know you guys know them all, but you know Jesse and Richard and and Santa Claus. I mean Keith. You know they no matter what we needed, they just helped us, and they were part of our event. They've kind of become part of our family. I wish I could take them to every show that we do. But, um, you know, again, we just want to thank you. And then we have a couple of things. So I have with me one of our vendors, this young gentleman named Nate. He's Union Stripes. And he, and he hand makes these flags that are just phenomenal. And he has them for all different kinds of groups and service groups and you name it, and he can make it. And so what I had him do uh, for our company is to make this for you guys. So, so we can present it to you, and it's got your logo on the flag as well. So hopefully you can find an office or a wall or something to, to hang this on. So this is what it, this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. We want to give that to you. And then also, we do, um, in every city we go to, um, all of our raffles and everything we do is give back. We as a company will never keep any of it. So we decided that we would do 50% of the 50-50 raffle would go to the city we were being hosted in, and the other 50% goes to land preservation. So we didn't bring the crowds, so we didn't bring the, I wanted a big fat check this big, but we do have a check for $382 that you guys can use for whatever you want, and we'll, we want to do 10 times that hopefully in, in March, and I'm, I'm sure we will. But again, you know, it was great for us. It was a great learning facility because they were so accommodating through the whole process. Um, our feedback has been off the chain. My phone hasn't stopped ringing in two weeks. I was in uh, four cities in the last five days because they've invited us to come to their city and see about putting the event on in their city. Um, I've got people out of state asking me if we'd be willing to travel and put our show on. So for a company that didn't exist four months ago, we, I think we did pretty good. But we just came tonight to thank everybody. Um, hopefully you guys all come in March and see the show. We'll have rides for anybody that wants to jump in these Jeeps and go through obstacles and, and join us. So again, we just want to thank you, acknowledge Patty, and everybody that helped us uh, along the way. And we'll be back 23rd and 24th of March, and we're going to do it bigger and bigger and better in March. So thanks for your time. Thank you. It was a great event. Any of you that didn't make it up there, please put the 23rd and 24th on your calendar. It's really a family event, and there's something for everyone. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. And welcome to Norco, and thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. At this time, we are going to do a couple of recognitions. So we um, are going to start with Lieutenant Briddick. So if he will join uh, the council down at the podium, please. So as many of you know, uh, Lieutenant Briddick uh, is getting a different job assignment as he eases into retirement. So it's our pleasure to uh, recognize you this evening. Uh, Lieutenant Briddick was appointed to the Riverside County's um, dedicated lieutenant for the city of Norco back in June of 2014. The lieutenant who has been with the department since 1990 is a longtime Norco resident and therefore has a personal stake in our community. 
After completing the academy, then Deputy Bradick was assigned to the former Riverside Station, where he patrolled unincorporated areas of Riverside County. And in 1993, the deputy was reassigned to the contract city of Norco, where he handled patrol and traffic enforcement, as well as field training officer duties. He also served on Norco's community-oriented policing and problem-solving teams. In 2001, Deputy Burdick was promoted to investigator at the Harupa Valley Station, where he investigated a wide range of crimes against persons and property. In 2002, he was promoted again, earning the rank of sergeant and transferred to the Southwest Detention Center. In 2006, Sergeant Bridick was selected to join the sheriff's team responsible for the design, construction, and implementation of the county's new public safety radio system, referred to as Public Safety Enterprise Communication. In 2009, Sergeant Bridick was transferred to the City of Moreno Valley Police Department, where he worked a number of different assignments, including patrol, watch commander, the problem-oriented policing team, and administration. In 2012, he ascended to the rank of lieutenant and was transferred back to the Public Safety Enterprise Communication Project, overseeing the successful completion and implementation of the project that he had helped to design. In the position that he just finished, Lieutenant Burdick oversees the operations of the Norco Sheriff's Office, which is a satellite office of the Harupa Valley Station. The 14 deputies assigned to the Norco Sheriff's Office, as well as additional staff and volunteers, are part of the larger operation of the Harupa Valley Station, allowing the Norco Sheriff's Office to draw upon the considerable resources of the Riverside Sheriff's Department. So we've appreciated your time and work on behalf of our community. And at this time, I'll let the other council members say a few words. Your pro tem, I'm not bashful. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, I want to thank you for your time here. It's been very pleasant working with you. You've always been very cooperative if we had anything, and uh, you've let us all know when there was a problem going on, and uh, you got it, you and your guys got it handled, and uh, we appreciate it. And uh, besides being a top officer, I think you're a good gentleman on top of that, sir. So thank you much. I first met Eric with the Sheriff's Department. We were assigned to the Southwest Detention Center, came in as a brand new sergeant, and I go, yeah, it's tough. You just got to make a decision, but there's three of us other sergeants there with you, so if you do it wrong, well, we're all going fishing, so it doesn't make any difference. So, but it is, um, it's been a privilege and an honor to have Eric here in the city uh, as our lieutenant over the last couple of years. Uh, a long list of people fall before you, come before you, and you have matched and exceeded them. Sorry, Dan, but he has. He beat you, okay. So, but it is, it's, a, it's a good thing about it. I'll tell you, the first thing is, at the Southwest Detention Center, we had our locker rooms. I go in there and I see this thing with a rule bumper sticker on there. And oh, that's Britic. So, yeah, I figure he's all right. So, but Eric, thank you very much for all the work you've done. You guys are showing how much they love you. And, they, uh, and you're given a responsibility. So, that's one of the reasons why well, we always have a Deputy of the Year come out of here. Thank you. Yeah, buddy, what can I say? Um, I appreciate everything that you've done for all of us and, and our community. Um, y you're one of us. And I think what I'm going to take away is that a few months ago that I noticed uh, we were at Saddle Store and I saw a photograph of you and the mayor's husband. And for now, I'm going to keep that on the QT. And <laughs> But at the right time, I will publish it. Okay. So, <laughs> Eric. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, for me, it's uh, it's like losing part of the family. You know, Norco High graduate, Norco High graduate, and um, I hope we're going to see a lot of you around. I mean, I've gotten to know your wife and your kid, and I'm going to really miss you. And uh, you have big shoes to fill, which I have a hunch you're going to be able to do it. Because if he could top him, then there's there, we're just going to keep going up. So thanks, Eric, for everything. Thank you. 
So on behalf of the city of Norco, we do so appreciate your service and thank you for everything you've done for Norco. Would you like to say a few words? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> So first, I want to thank uh, the great citizens of Norco. You have a very high standard for law enforcement. You have a very high quality of life here. And we work very, very hard. But as we transition, I want you to know that the new chief of police is outstanding. I've known him for a number of years. And he's going to do a fine job. And as a citizen, I feel very confident in our Norco Sheriff's Office. I want to thank all the city council, the mayor for the tremendous support, each of the city department heads that, we, that I've sat here with and we've worked through a number of challenges and issues. I th am so grateful for your support. And lastly, this proclamation tonight really isn't about me and it isn't about anyone that sat in this seat previously or that's going to sit in it tomorrow. It's about the deputies. And the success, if you think the sheriff's office is successful out here, and I tell you it is, it's because of the deputies. So when you're at home, asleep at night, remember that there's a deputy out there patrolling. When you are celebrating your anniversaries, your birthdays with your families, deputies are missing theirs to patrol. And they do that by choice. So I just ask you to continue to support the deputies that are out there at all times of the night and day, making sure our, our community is safe. Thank you all. It's been a great ride. Thank you. Wow. Captain Hedge, you're next up. Welcome. How are you? Good. So Captain Hedge is a 21-year veteran of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, has over 30 years of law enforcement experience. He began his career with the Paris Police Department in 1987 as a patrol officer and later as a corporal. In 1996, the Paris Police Department began contracting for services with the Riverside County Sheriff's Office, where Captain Hedge continued his law enforcement career. And over the next several years, Captain Hedge worked at the Harupa Valley Station in a variety of assignments including patrol, field training officer, and in the Norco Community Oriented Policing Team. He also oversaw the Norco Citizens Patrol Unit during, the ti during that time. In 2001, Captain Hedge was promoted to investigator and assigned to the Robert Presley Detention Center. And in February of 2003, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant and transferred to the Moreno Valley Station. As a sergeant, he was assigned to patrol operations and later supervised the Moreno Valley Resource Officer Unit, as well as serving as the administrative sergeant for the station. Captain Hedge was promoted to the rank of lieutenant in 2010 and assigned to patrol and administrative assignments at the Paris Station. He was later assigned to the Harupa Valley Station as the dedicated lieutenant of the wonderful city of Norco. And in 2014, Captain Hedge was transferred to the Personnel Bureau where he oversaw the recruiting and hiring for the department. The Harupa Valley Station provides police services to the unincorporated county communities of High Grove, Lake Hills, Home Gardens, El Cerrito, Coronita, Prado Basin, and the Cleveland National Forest in Riverside County. The station also provides police services under the contract to the cities of Eastvale, Harupa Valley, Norco. And Captain Hedge has served as the police of ch police 
cheap for all three cities. So uh, Captain Hedge will be moving and at the R Robert Presley Detention Center. So we want to thank you for your time here, Captain, and your watchful eye over the city of Norco and all that you've done for us. So with that, I will let my fellow council members say a few words. Captain, I'm not going to be like Ted. I'm going to say you've done a good job both times you've been around here. <laughs> I appreciated working with you when you was a lieutenant over here. You made a lot of changes for the positive, and then when you come back as captain, well, things got better again. So appreciate everything you've done, and uh, don't be a stranger come around to see us here. That. It's, it's fun to hear the history uh, work because I worked the Paris station too right after you left. And uh, from the Paris station to here, what a difference. But Dan has been uh, done a lot of good things here in the city when he was a lieutenant. He also, for those who didn't know, he made sure when he was a captain over at Harupa, made sure that we had the best people coming over here, assigned here, because he worked here. He knew this. He knows the area. He knows the people. So for that, uh, you never forget what's going on, and you, you always took care of us, Dan. And I appreciate everything you do. And his new challenge at the jail, I know you got a lot of, it's, where most deputies start. So you've got a lot of training, a lot of things to do, and uh, they got the right man on the job for it. So appreciate it, Dan. Thank you. What are you smiling for? <laughs> You're just I'm afraid, right? Really <laughs> Captain, <laughs> Captain Dan. <laughs> uh, just uh, how much I appreciate when you were our chief and that what you've done for us as the head of the Arupa Station, you've always had our support. And but the one thing I took away from you was that how much you enjoyed being a cop. And I'm going to miss you. I read on Facebook that they finally caught you and they're putting you in the slammer. <laughs> You know what I loved about you the most, and I have to, you and Eric are tied together in my mind, and I always felt like Norco had the best deputies in the entire department, but what I loved about you the most is how you treated the Citizens Patrol, and I have to include Eric in that too. You clearly cared for those people. I mean, the hours, and the, I mean, even when you weren't directly involved, you came to their events, you saw them, and I really, I really appreciate that, and we're going to miss you. I mean, it's, uh, but I really, I'm impressed with this guy, too, so I think we're in good shape. Him, I don't know yet. I'll wait to hear him talk. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Captain, would you like to say a few words? I, I, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody, the community and city council staff. Um, I, I'm, I'm very humbled to be standing here in front of you. Um, after all these years, I started here uh, over 20 years ago as a deputy sheriff patrolling the area, came back as lieutenant, and then come back, came back as a, a commander of the Rupa Valley Station. So I, I'm, I'm honored. I've always been honored to, to, to be out here. I've never kept it a secret, and I think it's, it's well known that I love this community. I've been saying that for many, many years, and I still love this community. But like Eric said, um, we can only do so much. It's the, the good staff and the good deputies and the good lieutenants um, that, uh, that, that really make it what it is for, for law enforcement. Um, I think there was kind of like a, a pattern uh, during the last uh, presentation uh, about the one person being better than the other. And that's always been a goal of the Sheriff's Department, is to bring people in as a replacement that's either equal to or better. And I think we've really fulfilled that here in this community with the deputies, uh, with Lieutenant Eric has done an outstanding job. And I want to personally thank you, Eric. You've done, you've done very well for the community and for, for the department. Uh, and, and I'm sure that the Lieutenant, I, we've worked together before, myself and, and Andy, he's going to do an excellent job. Um, and the new captain, my replacement, um, I think that, like I said, equal or better, I think um, better. Um, I know Kevin put in a request for taller, taller. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah, there you go. See, that's what I mean. There's a pattern here. Um, he did the same to me. <laughs> yeah, yes. However, uh, you know, out of uh, 30 plus years in law enforcement, I've only been to the jail, working in the jails once, and that was for a year and a half as a detective. But I can tell you the benefit I was discussing earlier is that it's freezing outside. I'll tell you, it's like 70 degrees 24 7 in the jail. So I'm, I'm getting soft. Um, even though it's been a couple of weeks. But again, I just want to thank everybody. Um, again, it's a wonderful community and it's been an honor to serve you. Thank you. All right, at this time, we're going to go ahead and do our introduction. So, Lieutenant, if you would like to do the honors, please. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council. It's my honor and privilege to uh, introduce our new area commander for the Harupa Valley Station, uh, Captain John Morin. Uh, I've known John. John uh, brings tremendous experience, uh, leadership, and integrity to the department. So we're very excited to have him. So. Without further ado, uh, Captain John Warren. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you, Council, for letting me be here. Uh, listening to to Eric and and Dan talk, uh, it's truly an honor to be here amongst you. Uh, I've always heard about the Norco Station. I've always heard about the reputation of family. I've always heard about um, how well the deputies do out here. I had the privilege of promoting within. I was at the Harupa Valley Station in charge of investigations and special enforcement for the last year. And what I was very impressed with during that last year, and I don't know if Eric knows this, is he always spoke about the deputies. Everything was always about the deputies. Whenever we had a good investigation over here, he always made sure in our staff meetings that the deputies were recognized and he never took credit for anything. And I want to thank you for that, Eric. Um, you've done an outstanding job here. Um, Captain Hedge, I have, I have big shoes to fill. Um, obviously, you're, you've been here for many, many years and you've always talked in our staff meetings how much you love this city. And I want you guys to know that this is the Sheriff Department's first contract and it's the most important contract. So nothing's going to change. From, from our perspective. In fact, talking to the sheriff, he would like our department to mirror what happens in Norco as far as the team atmosphere, uh, the, the willingness to work together, and the fact that uh, we get the job done with the best deputies we can. So I'd like to keep that promise to you that we're gonna keep doing that. And again, I'm very, very humbled to be here amongst you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain, and welcome to Norco. Councilman Bash says next time he'd like you to have a cowboy hat. <laughs> okay, at this time we're going to go ahead and proceed into uh, City Council business items uh, with City Council communications and reports on regional boards and commissions. So we will start with uh, Councilman Hanna. Well, we're putting them all on these little PowerPoints. The key things, if you'll notice there, the ridership on the bus to Disneyland and other parts of Orange County has increased to about 600 and something 
riders a day, and a round trip fare is about three dollars. So you can't uh, you can't beat that. And uh, city of Riverside employees and uh, college students for the at the House of Pass they ride for free. And during the uh, holidays with a 25 cent ride for the students from uh, kindergarten to grade 12 there was 19,000 students rode those buses those days so that's been a big success also and uh, yeah the next one the RCTC I just got back from a workshop down at Temecula it's our annual workshop and one thing we voted on there was uh, to approve the flyover from the eastbound 91 toll lanes to the northbound 15 toll lanes. They didn't uh, engineer them when they first put the freeway in. They didn't engineer either either side, northbound or uh, the southbound side that you get onto the freeway with, but we've gone back and found the funding to uh, get those. and. Uh, the I-15 express lane project's moving right along, and there's one little short video on here. If you, you see these every week when it comes out on the uh, website about the I-15 progress. So, Matt, can you get that one in there? The Riverside County Transportation Commission presents the fifth edition of its video series, 15 Facts on the 15 Express Lanes. This edition focuses on innovative bridge building. The construction of the 15 express lanes requires the widening of 11 bridges between Cahalco Road and Route 60. The Santa Ana River Bridge, at more than 1,800 feet in length, is the largest bridge to be widened. To minimize effects to the Santa Ana River, crews will perform most of the work from the top of the existing bridge, reducing the need to build support structures beneath the bridge. This is where innovation begins. Crews will use enormous precast girders to widen the Santa Ana River Bridge. Precast girders are also being used to widen the other 10 bridges. Each girder is 170 feet long and weigh more than 110 tons. The girders will be moved into place at night using CHP escorts. When the girders arrive, giant gantry cranes will carry the girders along the 1,800-foot bridge span and lay them exactly in place for construction crews to secure. This innovation provides benefits by reducing effects on the Santa Ana River, shortening construction time by not having to build support structures beneath the bridge, using cranes to eliminate the need for lane closures on the bridge, reducing traffic congestion, motorist delays, and street closures, decreasing construction costs. Over the coming months, crews will assemble the first of two gantry cranes near the Santa Ana River Bridge and will deliver the precast girders this spring. Please watch for updates and images of this innovative work. Want to stay connected? Sign up on our website or text for weekly construction updates. One more addition, when they complete this section of the 15 from 60 to Cahalco Road, then they're going to go from uh, Cahalco to uh, Highway 74 in Elsinore with the lanes. They'll, they'll eventually get all the way to San Diego County, but right now when they finish this project, they'll go on down and uh, work further south, so it should help uh, with all the homes they're building down there and adding traffic. So. Thank you very much. All right, Councilman Hoffman. Yeah, I did a lot of meetings with uh, residents and, and other people. There. But the main thing I want to talk about is the RICWA meeting uh, that we had on the teleconference. And just to let you know, uh, <clears throat> the RICWA, which we're a part of the JPA with a, a group of community service districts, home gardens, city of Corona, and ourselves. Uh, <clears throat> that is where all our wastewater goes. And unfortunately in that, they were doing some uh, 
work on it and figured out that uh, we had to increase the amount of uh, the purchase order for the oxidation ditch aeration because they found that the, the parts had worn out more uh, quicker than they thought they were going to do. So if you cut some odor of it while it was still, uh, you know, it was still uh, before it was repaired, hopefully this will take care of that. So uh, that's all, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to let people know that we're working on trying to get that, uh, keep that thing working right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Councilman Bash. So um, I attended the League of Cities quarterly statewide conference as part of the Community Services co Committee. Um, I was a little disappointed. That's a committee that uh, does parks, uh, historic preservation, uh, child care issues, um, community services. And unfortunately, right now, everybody's so overwhelmed with the homelessness impact, the compelled housing, the governor's budget, the money he's taking away or sort of holding as a carrot. Um, so there's a lot of unrest. Uh, there was also a lot of discussion um, about the League of Cities position on the compelled housing. They seem to be for it. So there's a lot of uh, kind of going back and forth right now within the committees. Um, at the new police chief, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we have our Norco Film Festival coming up uh, March 2nd. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I want to touch on uh, the rural planning with uh, Ted and I we talked about last time. Schools Committee, uh, Life Over Alcohol. Next one. Okay. The, uh, um, that's just a lot of stuff about saving animals and uh, the 400,000 protected acres per the plan, uh, RCA, but the next one. Um, what's really important about this is uh, <coughs> federal HR 530, and this is something that I think that our city needs to become involved in. You can read the other stuff there. There's quite a few things covered. But what happened is, is that, as you may recall, we went to Sacramento, and Berwin and I, and we, we helped to fight against um, losing the ability to control broadband uh, towers. And they could just put them wherever they wanted. Well, we, we had the governor. He finally listened to us. He vetoed it. We won. Unfortunately, um, the powers that be decided just to go past that. And um, they decided that they would just put it into place and just kind of we lost all of our control over that. Well, uh, at a federal level, there is a um, HR 530, which will override that. And so I think one of the things we need to do as a city is we need to send a letter ASAP uh, asking Congressman Calvert to support this bill to override the loss of that um, uh, uh, ability to control where we put these cell towers. Um, that's really the most important thing I wanted to talk about. And then finally, I did meet with uh, Supervisor Spiegel, and she has asked that the city of Norco, um, you know, that's all stuff. Um, she asked that the city of Norco give her something that will remind her of Norco in her office. And I don't know what that would be. I think we should maybe put our thinking caps on. I know we have that rug that's kind of cool. Uh, maybe a photograph of the memorial. I don't know. There's a... One of my favorites is that photograph we took of all the firemen the day of 9-11 and all the police officers. That would be a very cool thing in front of our fire station. But I think it needs to be a council decision or the mayor's decision. And she would like to, us to present it to her and so she knows it's one of her cities. All right, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Newton. Um. I guess the, the, the biggest thing I have is the uh, Chino de Salter board meeting tomorrow um, afternoon. And just a slight update with the, uh, the, the boring that we're doing underneath the river. That is progressing. And I'm going to say within the next two weeks, what we may see is we're going to stage everything on oh, as, as we drill underneath the river and we come up to Old Hamner Road. Um, we're going to stage all the pipe on Old Hamner. It will all be welded together, and then the machine is going to hook onto that pipe, and all the piping will be on rollers, and we're going to pull it back down through the boring and back underneath the river. So I'll have more of a target date. I'll know a little bit more tomorrow if I think that would be the more interesting thing to see is 
um, when this pipe gets pulled back through and underneath the river. Um, the, I think the, the wall on this pipe is like five inches thick. It's, it's some pretty heavy duty stuff. Uh, Chad's been working with the, the CDA on this as far as making all the arrangements on um, accommodating all the residents that live on Old Hamner Road. And um, so I'll, I'll fill you in on that as uh, I learn more tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And then just uh, for my report, you can see it there. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the Sheriff's Department for allowing me to be a volunteer for the point in time uh, count and um, learn the processes and the things that are involved with that. So thank you, Deputy. It's always a pleasure. And um, the only other thing that I have is the unload meeting uh, we had on Monday. We are going to have a town hall so to speak we haven't come up with a title or name for it yet for the youth in the community of Norco it'll be held at Nellie Weaver Hall we are going to have um, Mothers Against Drunk Driving have their display car there and they will be a speaker and then we'll also have um, Opal Singleton come and speak to the youth as well and the reason why we picked that time is right before prom and right before spring break so it's an ideal time to remind the youth about um, making good choices as they have a little bit more uh, free time so we're really looking forward to uh, having that event and having a product uh, come out of the unload committee so that concludes my report real quick I want to thank Eric for steering the unload committee to from a, a point of not quite sure what we wanted to do to, to forming to this event and uh, I really hand it to you for kind of guiding us thank you Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes. So at this time, we will move to item number two on the agenda, City Council consent items. All items listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and may be enacted by one motion. Uh, prior to the motion to consider any action by the Council, any public comments on any of the consent items will be heard. There will be no separate action unless members of the council or the audience request specific items be removed from the consent calendar. Items removed from the consent calendar will be separately considered under item number three of the agenda. So with that, um, do any members of the council have items they wish to be pulled? E. So Kevin is going to pull E. Any other items to be pulled? Move to approve the rest. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve all items of the consent calendar except for letter E. Please vote on this item. Easy. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. So we will move on to item number three, which is items pulled from the city's consent calendar and Councilman Bash. Just really briefly, Brian, could you just talk a little bit about the party partner um, monies that came? I'd be happy to. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Council. Um, the item on the agenda tonight is the acceptance of the Nancy Adrian Newman Trust Fund. Um, uh, Mrs. Newman's brother was a uh, participant of the uh, Party Partners Program for a number of years. Uh, as you know, as a part of our budget uh, shortfalls in the past, this program has uh, been reduced uh, and has been inactive uh, for about a year. Uh, Mrs. Newman uh, felt very passionate about this program and had identified that her trust uh, uh, would be uh, uh, a, a large portion, actually 40% of her trust would be dedicated to uh, the restoration of and restoring of the Party Partners Program. So tonight's action uh, is actually a donation from the Nancy Newman Trust Fund um, and basically 
Um, she has left uh, the city $133,325.66 uh, to continue the operations of the uh, Party Partners Program. Uh, with the council's adoption of this, uh, we will be planning to start that restart that program in July. Could we um, send a letter of thanks to the person that made this donation? And, uh, isn't there a friend that's associated uh, that facilitated there, there's this? There's actually two people. There's her daughter, who is the executor of the trust, and then there is uh, Emily uh, Stanton, who is uh, her close friend, who is also noted in the trust, and is also her brother was, uh, is a, was a participant in the Party Partners Program as well. So could we send letters to those people and just sign them from council? and thank them very much for this. It's a, it's really cool that this was solved. And thanks, staff, for following through on all this and Michelle and everybody involved. That's all we have. Uh, with this, were you going to say something? I'm sorry, Brian. No, no. Uh, with this uh, motion to approve. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve item E. Please vote on this item. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. So we will move on to agenda item number four, public comments. This is the time when persons in the audience wishing to address the city council regarding matters not on the agenda may speak. Please complete the speaker card in the back of the room and present it to the city clerk so that you may be recognized. The Ralph M. Brown Act limits the city council's ability to respond to comments on non-agendized matters at the time such comments are made. The city council shall not discuss or take action relative to any general public comment. Bonnie Slager. Good evening. Um, Two things. First of all, I wanted to invite everybody to the next town hall meeting, which is Monday, February 25th. So I hope everybody in the audience will attend. And the second thing is Norco Horsemans is going to have their annual casino night on March 9th. And the purpose of this fundraiser is for uh, money to provide scholarships to some of our high school students that are in the FFA program. And uh, we typically are able to give scholarships to five students to help them further their education after high school. So I hope everybody will attend, sponsor, whatever. I do have tickets tonight. Pre-sale tickets are $20 each. At the door, they're 25 So get your tickets now. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Mayor, that concludes public comments. Okay, so we will proceed to item number five on the agenda, which is legislative matters. No new evidence will be heard from the public as the public hearing has been closed regarding the items listed on the agenda. So item A is ordinance number uh, 1046, second reading, an ordinance of the city of Norco. Um, yeah, of the City Council of the City of Norco approving zone change 2018-04. Uh, Is there a motion? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to um, adopt ordinance 1046. Please vote on this item. Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to item 5B, ordinance number 1047, second reading, an ordinance of the city of Norco approving specific plan 85-1, amendment 11 to amend the Norco Automall specific plan along with any related references. Is there a motion? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to um, adopt ordinance number 1047. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, the next item, number six, discussion and action items. Letter A is an appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill one unscheduled vacancy. Um, and we will have Cheryl report. Thank you, Mayor, City Council members. Uh, so again, this is a, an appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill one unscheduled vacancy. 
The general requirements to serve on a city commission are noted in Chapter 2.22 of the Norco Municipal Code. And that includes, uh, or members must be a um, citizen of the United States, a resident of the city, at least 18 years of age, must take the oath of office, and um, have no felony convictions. Specific to the Historic Preservation Commission, residents, um, or excuse me, members, must have uh, knowledge um, uh, to be able to analyze and interpret architectural and site planning information. Also through educational and professional experience, um, have knowledge in urban planning, architectural history, uh, historic preservation, um, and more, as well as general knowledge of architectural styles in Norco. So again, this is as a result of a, a letter of resignation received by Patricia Overstreet on December 10th of last year. And so following that, the city clerk's office released a public notice on January 3rd of this year. And that release was made through uh, the city's newsroom, specifically Top Stories, also through social media posts and the city's website. The uh, recruitment ended on January 28th. And during that period, uh, the city clerk's office received three applications. Uh, and those names are noticed, noted there, David Rubenstein, Michael DeRosa, and Gary Bowen. All three applicants are in the audience and um, ready to speak on their qualifications. So unless you have any questions, that concludes my, my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to call them up to speak. Does council have any questions? All right, we're ready to hear from the applicants then. David Rubenstein. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, and staff. My name is David Rubenstein. I'm a classical concert pianist with five decades of experience in the concert and music recording world. I'm also an amateur painter. I've been a member of Rural with my wife, Elizabeth, for about a year. We moved to Norco about two years ago. Uh, we were attracted to Norco because of its equestrian atmosphere, which was kind of similar to the atmosphere in our previous neighborhood of Shadow Hills, California. Uh, I'm here today at the suggestion of my friend Larry Eckhoff, as well as Pat Overstreet and Jeff Cahan, who I, I have met at various uh, rural um, events, along with Kevin Bash, they have also heard my musical performances. I believe in the preservation of old and beautiful things. This is reflected in my approach to artistic matters. Many of you are familiar with Beethoven's so-called Moonlight Sonata. As a teenager, I heard this uh, piece frequently, but I didn't feel that I could bring anything interesting or new to the interpretation until very recently. I discovered that by paying close attention to the original edition, audiences could perhaps hear it closer to the way Beethoven intended it. So I decided to follow Beethoven's markings in the score. So far, I haven't heard any uh, grumbling. And this is uh, similar to dusting off an old painting. Preserve the painting, not the dust. So I hope that I'll be able to apply my philosophy to preservation in Norco. Thanks for listening to my presentation, and thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Michael, Michael DeRosa. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Councilman. As you will be appointing a new member to the Norco Historic Preservation Commission, it is my hope that you will judge the applications with careful attention to which applicant has the most qualified background to assume the responsibilities that are needed for this position. I am confident that my professional career working 
with U U.S. history, American government, and participating in local government in the city that I worked in for over 30 years should prove that I would be suitable in an asset on this commission. Moreover, my doctoral program was focused on urban leadership, particularly improving communities. Another organization that I participated in was the Inland Communities Organizing Network, which focused on working with faith and labor organizations and municipalities in the Riverside and San Bernardino counties to assist communities in finding solutions to various challenges. Since my family moved to Norco, we have demonstrated a commitment to working to make this a better community. Now I would like to further my commitment to better support Norco and our local government by serving on the Historic Preservation Commission. I truly appreciate the years that I've lived in Norco and the relationships that our family has developed with our city leaders, and it is my hope that I can contribute further to keeping Norco a unique and interesting place to live by preserving those places that our community values and wants to protect. Thank you for all your years of dedicated service, and please ac accept my appreciation for your consideration of my application. Good evening. Thank you. Gary Bowen. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members. My name is Gary Bowen. Um, looking for your support and consideration for the appointment to the Historical Preservation Committee. Um, my wife and I moved here three and a half years ago. Uh, in that time, one of the first groups we joined was the Lake Norconian Club Foundation, and it got me really interested in the history and the background of Norco. Um, along with that, we belong to numerous other volunteer organizations, and we just have the time and like to provide the effort to help out the city with my um, for the time, but thank you. Thank you. Mayor, that concludes the comments. I do have voting ballots here whenever the council is ready to proceed. All right, does council have any questions or comments at this time? I have a comment. Sure. So um, for me, I, I will say this, uh, I think I got passed over twice for the um, Parks and Rec Commission, and then they finally let me in. I was there 10 years. Uh, please keep trying. Um, this is, we have three very, very strong applicants, and I do know that there's two positions coming up on this commission in just a few months, and I know one person is retiring and moving out of the city, and I think, I think the other person is also going to be... I have a hunch there's going to be two more positions after this. So um, thank you for the appointment. Keep trying if, if you don't get selected tonight. That's really what I'm trying to say. We need people exactly like the three people who stood at that podium. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any other comments from Council? All right, we will proceed with the vote.
Okay, the results of the voting. Council Member Hannah voted for Gary Bowen. Council Member Hoffman voted for David Rubenstein. And we have a majority vote. The other remaining three council members voting for Michael DeRosa. So we have three votes for him, making him the appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission. Congratulations, Mr. DeRosa. All right, thank you. And thank you again to all the applicants. And we look forward to uh, hopefully having you apply to commissions again soon. So with that, we are going to move on to agenda item 6B, which is, um, I can find my paper, our new rules and procedures. So a resolution approving amendments to the rules of procedure for city council meetings. And again, our city clerk will report on that for us. Thank you, Mayor, city council members. So yes, this is the rules and procedures for city council meetings. Having these rules for city council members has several benefits. First, it allows for meetings to be run in an efficient and consistent manner. Second, it allows for the council and residents to, to debate matters of public concern in a courteous and respectful manner. Third, rules provide guidance to council members on how they are to interact and engage with city employees and members of the public. Fourth, rules of procedure assist new elected officials and appointed commissioners understanding the guidelines for city council meetings and uh, other advisory body meetings. So I wanted to point out that uh, there is a difference between the, rule, the resolution before you and other city resolutions. Uh, the Norco City Council Norms and Procedures, which was um, most recently updated in 2008, focuses on operating vision and establishing priorities, uh, city council interaction with staff, and election season norms. The Code of Ethics for city council members, commission members, and city employees resolution, which was revised in 2013, addresses ethical considerations, responsibility, equity, and high standards. So I just wanted to point that out, and those are currently under review for possible revisions as well. So this resolution tonight has 13 main topics within it, and we have some additions to this resolution with um, some minor clerical changes and then some substantial additions, and so I'm only going to address the, the larger additions to this resolution. So first we'll start with the purpose, which is on the first page of the proposed resolution. And it's under uh, section two of the resolution. And on the left is what's currently in the resolution and on the right is the proposed changes. The items um, or the text in red strike out is what's proposed to be deleted. The text in blue is the, what's being proposed to be added to the resolution. So this resolution uh, again applies to city council meetings. It's been implied that it uh, applies to city commissions, committees, boards, and advisory councils. But the text in blue there just puts it in there in writing that it does apply to those bodies as well. And then again, um, the reason for this resolution is to promote transparencies and citizen participation. Um, it's not only good for the city council to understand the guidelines and have something to follow, but it's also a benefit for the public as well. And then continuing on on the resolution, page two, under city council meetings, item E, again on the left is what's currently on there. What's being proposed is just some um, um, clarification, and that's mostly what this resolution is doing are the proposed changes. So um, every city council meeting agenda is noticed. For regular meetings, the notice notification is a minimum 72 hours. Um, and for, for special meeting, it's minimum 24 hours. And as you know, 
the notification is done well in advance of that, specifically for regular meeting agendas. We sometimes post uh, five to six days prior to the meeting. So that's well, well above and beyond the 72 hour requirement. The items that are, or excuse me, the, the posting locations have been added uh, and that is set by city resolution. So that can change, but um, those are the five locations in addition to the city website where meeting notices can be found for the public. Continue on, on to order of business. And I believe that's on page five of the resolution. Uh, there's no clear or really any text at all in the current resolution about closed session. And so we've added um, item C on the, on the right there in blue. And again, it just talks about um, the public's uh, right to speak on any closed session items prior to the city council recessing into closed session. And uh, just as they can with any item on the agenda. Madam Mayor, just, I've got the order of business on the closed session. That's on, you skip over page four. Because you deleted, I'm looking at the, uh, the the deletion of number one agenda. Are you looking at the red line? Mm -hmm. Yes, because that was uh, that's clarified elsewhere uh, in the resolution. Okay, I was just, I was just, I, that's why, if it's clarified later on, it's fine, I just wondered why, that's all. Yes, there, there, were, there were a number of situations in the ordinance that, or the resolution, that were either redundant or uh, covered in another way, so. Yeah, public comments is addressed elsewhere in the resolution, but this specifically doesn't apply because uh, this you're referencing uh, that the, the city council's intention to receive public comments by 9 p.m. Is that the one you're speaking yes. of? And because that was, I remember when they put that in there for a certain reason. That's why. Yeah, well, point in time, public comments was later in the agenda, and mm -hmm. we've recently moved it up higher, um, for first on the agenda, to allow for public comments okay, so earlier in the evening. Clean. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. So again, going back to closed session, um, let's see what are the other items here. Just again, that the council has, or excuse me, the, the public has um, the ability to speak on items on the agenda re relating to closed session matters. And uh, I don't know if the city attorney wants to add anything related to closed session. No, other than this, the, this section is essentially statutory. Uh, it's what we do now but uh, there's, it's just not reflected in the procedures. Okay, then next on the resolution, I'm, I'm just going off of the clean copy, so I apologize if you're going off of the red line copy, but on page seven of the resolution, we've um, added um, a substantial amount of information there or, or text regarding public hearing, the public hearing process. Uh, and there was, wasn't any information in the current resolution on that. So again, it's just uh, procedural. Uh, it gives direction to council and staff on, on how public hearings are managed in a meeting, including um, staff reports, written materials, um, questions of staff. So unless there's any questions on that, that's just um, essentially what we're doing now, but it's been put in writing. Also on the hearing process uh, and the rights of the presiding officer, the mayor, on how to manage public hearing testimony. Uh, again, speaker time, which is um, follows along with uh, the three-minute limit there. Uh, an addition is item D, where uh, the applicant or the appell appellant is limited to 10 minutes. And those are the highlights of those sections. Mayor, just are, are, since this is a writing, are these concrete times now, or does the uh, presiding officer have the ability to be flexible on some of these? Well, the, the, the council, I mean, this is a resolution. The, the council always has the ability, a majority of the council, to uh, give more time or, or to uh, 
the app appellant or to give more time to a member of the public. As a, currently, uh, currently, th this doesn't provide for the mayor uh, in and of themselves to make that decision, but the council can vary from these by majority. Depending on the agenda item yeah. then. And so just on, and I'm reading that because when you're talking about procedures, are these are procedures that are gonna be somewhere posted outside when we do this? And the, re the reason I'm asking is, uh, like your number on B, uh, 2B5, speakers will be discouraged from reading a submission that is already contained in the agenda material. And I know some of it, they, gets, they keep getting repetitive on it, but I just want, so that the speakers know these are guidelines or are these absolutes. I don't want to discourage people from talking. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, none of these are absolutes. Uh, but, and I suppose it's not something we discussed, but that at least as to the hearing process, I guess that you could have uh, hearing procedures prepared and anybody that wants to pick one up can do it the same time you pick up an agenda. Sure, we can have that posted. In the or at least read before hearing matters so that they're clear on it. I just don't want people to get things that we're shutting them off and without being, or being offended. That's my point. Yeah, and I suppose that uh, kind of like the Planning Commission does, that uh, you could add to the agenda one through five uh, as a part of every agenda in the, in the portion of the agenda which explains public hearings. It's currently what the mayor reads before each mm -hmm. public hearing item. Can, uh, so we, okay. although, yeah, although you'd add the the, the language that is different than what is currently read. Again, this is just a, um, additional comments or text related to public hearings and council deliber deliberations. This is addresses council action, um, options to continue a public hearing, um, and then the actions on whether voting on an item or offering amendments. Um, and also item C, findings. Um, generally speaking, council members should um, comment on their findings or um, their support um, of their actions. Item G, I think I'll let uh, the city attorney speak on this, and this is um, outside meetings or extra meetings um, prior to public hearings. Yeah, I mean, with, with, without going through the language, I mean, it's kind of the speech that I've given many, many times that uh, council members should avoid when you have a, a matter which is scheduled for public hearing before you. The purpose of the public hearing is to take testimony at the hearing and make decision based upon the information that you receive in that public hearing. And to that extent, uh, it's discouraged uh, essentially soliciting uh, additional information or being having additional information provided you by applicants uh, that isn't in the public hearing to the extent that you receive it or you meet with a developer for example at a site that those are things which should be disclosed uh, prior to the beginning of the public hearing that's a, a matter of transparency and a matter of due process john yep. is there any is there an ethical code violation or a statutory requirement that says we can't do that that you can't meet with yeah. no no no, in fact, uh, and I come back to quite often in, in during uh, a project, one or two of us will be contacted, even by staff, to say, "Hey, we want to meet and discuss an item that that's being a project that's being developed." Yep, and you will. Well, there's a difference between discussing a project that will be developed and one that's scheduled for a public hearing before you. That means, generally speaking, it's gone through a public hearing at the Planning Commission. Uh, the project's either been approved or not approved and is here either on appeal or because that's the natural course of things. And it's the receiving of input that that is outside 
the scheduled public hearing that's the problem. It's not a, um, I mean the, the kinds of circumstances that you'd normally talk about are a developer has a piece of property and wants to feel out council members about what kinds of things should go on there or, or he has a project and how would you kind of feel about a project like this. That's different than uh, when the matters or the application's been submitted, the project's been conditioned, it's gone through the planning commission, and now it's scheduled for a public hearing before you. Okay. Again, I'm going to. And, and is, there, is there anything that's uh, illegal about it? No. Uh, if, and what I'm suggesting is if that happens, that you disclose it. Uh, there are, there's a, a LA Planning Commission case that involved a developer, that, or excuse me, a, develop, a planning commission that took, uh, received information outside of the public hearing, took a public position on it, and then voted in accordance with that public position, even though it, the, it wasn't based upon things that were received in the public hearing. And the court set, it, set aside the decision of the planning commission. Uh, it's a, a purely a due process issue. All right. Keeping this in mind and what we're doing here, then our planning department and even the area city manager, and on these developers that come in and we have a project, then they should get a copy of this that literally tells them once it's on, gone through and ready for council, don't contact us yeah. anymore. Yeah. Well, and if you if you read what the language. I mean, don't put us in a situation that like that. Yeah, uh, and that's what you, you can see, however, that the language of 5A is minimize contact, not contact is prohibited. There are actually are some cities that absolutely prohibit contact, that they, they want to tell a developer, uh, no, you may not deal with this except at the public hearing or through staff when staff provides a staff report. Uh, that isn't the way it is in Norco and probably doesn't need to be, but uh, the contacts should be minimized. And if it's uh, w going out and looking at a piece of property or a building, that's a lot different circumstance than meeting with a developer at City Hall who tries to sell you on everything he wants to do. And now you just, it, it, just for clarification, and, and not only for ourselves, but for future councils, if these developers know that, and when they come in with Steve and they start doing that, so that we don't put ourselves in a situation where anybody sitting up at this dais says, oh, by the way, I can't, and you yeah. lose well, it. And, so. and again, if you move down to uh, 5C, it's that once you have those, if you have those contacts, and there's nothing necessarily nefarious about it, you have those contact. Uh, property owners in the city, um, homeowners in the city, want an opportunity to talk to individual council members. It's just that you need, for the purposes of transparency and so that the both sides of what a, a, an issue uh, see what input has been provided to the council members. And you do it by just disclosing, yes, I met with uh, the homeowners uh, on in Saddles or Lane uh, on Tuesday night uh, when they presented some information to me. Uh, but although I'm going to make my decision based upon uh, that information which I receive in the public hearing, it's just a, it's a matter of transparency and disclosure. Okay, so but there's no court decision or it statutory. Says you can't be, oh no, says you quite the okay. opposite. I mean, in, individual citizens, whether they're developers or whether they're homeowners, have. Uh, a right to meet with their elected officials. Yeah, I just want to make uh, the distinction between meetings before the projects is submitted and meetings after the project is submitted. I think, uh, uh, Ted, your concern, as far as staff is concerned, is that we typically, I as a city manager, frequently request uh, that a couple of city council members work with staff as a project is in conceptual stages, okay, to, to, to explore. Um, but this is different from after a project is actually uh, gone through the planning commission and, and, and before the city council. So my understanding is those uh, meetings that happen before a project is submitted uh, is okay. And those don't have to be disclosed. Is that correct, John? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that that is really most times where mm -hmm. staff uh, engages city council. Yeah, and uh, 
of again it's once it's after it gets to the public hearing process and looking at B kind of the, the second sentence is the council member explains to whichever party it might be they're unable to express a new viewpoint until it's till the public hearing and that's what they're going to rely on the public hearing and encourage whichever developer homeowner whatever the issue is to submit uh, testimony and information in writing so it's a part of the record but ultimately again I'm not all of this has happened before but I'm not suggesting it happens very often a city gets sued this city gets sued by uh, somebody who proposes a project uh, and, or the other side saying that there isn't substantial evidence in the record to support your decision uh, <coughs> and there has to be your decision has to be made uh, based upon what's in the record not what you know outside the record because of uh, what uh, a, a developer said to you or tried to convince you Okay, moving on to the next item, which would be page 11 of the resolution, addresses, um, we've added uh, the authority of the presiding officer. And so the presiding officer essentially would be maintaining order, making sure that comments um, stay with uh, the topic at hand so as to not violate the Brown Act. And um, making sure that uh, motions are used appropriately with the um, assistance of the city attorney and the city clerk. Uh, so that's basically what that covers. The presiding officer um, section, which I believe is page, uh, the next page, page 12. Currently, uh, it's what's on the left there, the text. Again, we just expanded on that language to just get a little bit more detail on um, the, the, the duties of the presiding officer in maintaining order of a meeting. Yeah, yeah I can't. Any person. Yeah, it's just any, any person, yes. Thank you, you threw, Council you, Member you, Newton. You put a little dig in for you, did you? All right. <laughs> And then the next three slides um, are complete additions to the resolution, and this just lays out the um, responsibility of um, staff members, including the first one is the city manager. I shall attend every meeting and participate in the discussion with the city council. Um, if the city uh, manager is not, not able to attend, the deputy city manager takes um, his or her place. Also with the city attorney, added some language about um, the roles and responsibilities, adding, acting as an advisory parliamentarian for meetings. And also the city clerk um, must attend, otherwise the deputy city clerk uh, should be in attendance to keep the record of the meeting in accordance with the Brown Act. And moving on to rules, decorum, and order, which I believe begins on, uh, let's see, I believe it's page 13 or 14. And we've added uh, some language, again, to personal privilege, which is item F, and mostly to just give some guidance on how a council member should approach this, should it become a, um, an issue, uh, basically uh, calling for a point of per personal privilege to maybe talk out any um, offense or perceived offense on on character and again there's some uh, regards to conflicts of interest there is some language under rules to quorum and order that address this um, but under voting procedure which is um, essentially a an item or a section that we've we've added quite a bit of language there this just gets into a little bit more detail in regards to conflict of interest. And that um, basically a council member can abstain unless there's a financial conflict of interest and it's a recusal and the council member must physically leave council chambers and at that point they are considered absent from the meeting for that particular item. Again, continuing on with voting procedure, this is all new text, and it just goes into detail about abstentions. It's a council member's duty to vote, uh, but there are instances in which a council member may abstain. 
So again, participation is encouraged, but um, they can't abstain. And at that point, they're considered present in the meeting. I think those are the highlights of that section there. And that's those are basically the significant portions that have been changed, revised, added. If you have any questions, I can answer them, or the city attorney can chime in as well. Okay, so we'll start uh, with Councilman Hanna. Do you have any questions on the presentation? No, thank you. Councilman Hoffman, do you have any other questions on the presentation? No, I think you have clarified it all. Thank you. Councilman Bash? Councilman Newton? I'll disclose that I reviewed this with the clerk <laughs> earlier. No questions, thank you. It's okay, it's not a okay. Thanks. All right, Cheryl, I just had one question on page uh, six under public hearings. Um, the very last sentence talks about only evidence provided during the public hearing will be considered. And I wanted to ask you, um, does this include emails and how do we go about, do we just forward those to you and then they'll be considered into the public record? I know there were some questions about that before. So yeah. does this address that? Yeah, I mean, the, the answer is that anything that gets to the council gets considered as a part of the record. If you receive an email uh, that's on the subject and you pass it on to the city clerk and share it with the rest of the council, and yes. If, it, if you don't, obviously, then it doesn't get into the record. Um, my, I would encourage you, if you receive, to, uh, before a public hearing, emails or other communications for uh, on the subject, that they be immediately provided to the city clerk and then distributed to the council. Okay. More question on that. In our minutes there from the last meeting, there was an email that was received that was time stamped at past 7 p.m. when the meeting already had started. And where do we cut these off so for proper distribution if you're going to include an email in the well, hearing record? Yeah, I mean, there's no real hard and fast answer. Generally speaking, do you don't receive documents that are presented after the meeting's begun, but in real life, that isn't what happens. If, there, if there, you receive a date stamped uh, email that uh, I guess it ends up being the city clerk's call, but uh, if you provide it copies to all the council members and indicate that, the, I mean, I'm, if it's not lengthy, either read it or at least indicate that it's uh, before the council and it opposes the project or supports the project, and that'll be included in the record. Uh, I mean, if you want to not accept emails, is kind of a weird one, but if you want... Uh, no, I, I don't, not say not accept them, but have a, a cutoff time for when they make a comment on something. I mean, once we start the meeting, it's very difficult if somebody's going to... I mean, the timestamp on the last one we received was after 7, 7 p.m. Yeah, the, the, again, I think we probably almost have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis because, for example, in a public hearing, all the information that you're supposed to receive is received after the opening of the public hearing. So that the fact that the meeting began at 7 is kind of irrelevant. It's the time that the actual day yeah. of the public Okay. Yeah. So you. that if somebody comes in with an email and hands just like the other things that they hand, they get handed out. Okay. Uh, that it ends up at that point going to whether or not it's so late that it's going to have any impact. Uh, uh, back in the not, not old days, I guess not that old days, the sequel litigation particularly, it was pretty common for somebody to come in with you know 20 pages of comments on the EIR that you were about ready to certify and say, here they are. Uh, and the courts have held, you know, if it's so late that you can't legitimately consider it, that's the, the problem of the person presenting it. Okay. Are there any other questions for staff? Any other comments? I'll accept a motion. Or. To adopt resolution 2019 05. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded to adopt resolution number 2019-05, amending the rules of procedure for city council meetings. Please vote on this item.
Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. We will proceed to agenda item number seven, city council, city manager and staff communications. So we'll start with Mr. King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't have anything. Sorry. Chad, do you have anything? Matt? Cheryl? Councilman Newton? Oh. Councilman Bash? Mr. Harper? Nope. Mr. Curl? Nothing. Councilman Hoffman? Yeah, I want to thank. I want to thank. <laughs> Come on, I was going to thank Chad for the Crestview project. That was very good for flood control. Thank you for putting that out, getting it together. Thank you. Councilman Hanna? No, ma'am. Lieutenant? Chief? Thanks for joining us this evening. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Welcome back. Welcome back, sir. <laughs> Short meeting just for you. Gina? Brian? Just to note that the uh, we had a presentation last night for those who couldn't attend from the California Department of Food and Agriculture related to the Newcastle uh, situation, and they will be um, doing a short presentation again for us on the 20th, on our, at our next meeting. All right. All right. Um, and I would just like to follow up with that. Thank you to the residents of Norco for the attendance. It was um, a very well attended meeting and so I definitely appreciate that. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to adjourn this meeting of the Norco City Council at 831.